So what's up, man? So uh, welcome to Texas. Yeah. You come down here quite often. And and it'll be a lot more. Yeah, I, I know. saw that no golf course over there. Man. I don't have time to play, but I got to do that next time. <laughs> I told, this guy, like people always invite me and they say like, oh, you go golfing. Let's go golfing. And I'm like, I actually work. You know, like, I, get, I, I, I get shit done. You know, and exactly. This guy golfs all the time. You know, doing his thing, and then I'm just like, I'm like, well, you know, maybe you're not going to golf as much when you're over here because you're going to actually work. We're going to work a little bit. We have a golf course right there, and it's literally <laughs> like a painting it's on the a wall. Tease. So you can just it's sit a tease. there. You can play pool sometimes and look at it. But you just can't spend hours. <laughs> That's over there. right, right. You know I mean? My four to five hour day is gone looking at that thing. I get I get teased by it. That's it these yeah. days. I don't get to go play much. We'll have to. But you know what? The greatest thing is it. It, it doesn't even. It, I I don't feel like I'm missing anything because you know we're doing something that's just amazing here. And like mm-hmm. I say every day that I walk through, I love walking through that door and seeing all the guys. And it's 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 amazing. It's yeah. amazing. So I don't even miss it. What a, what a job. Yes, it's incredible. I yeah, love it's it. not a job. It's an adventure. It is an adventure. <laughs> you, you know, I think that. Uh, so, Nick, I've seen you for seen you from for years. You're like a social butterfly of this industry. Yes, he is. <laughs> he literally like I, you go to IMTS and I just see you over there and over there and over there. And then you're doing the making chips. And yeah. now you're over here on our podcast. What's up? It's man? cool. Yeah, I, you got to teach me how to podcast. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. what to do. Yeah, I'll give you a little cliff note instruction. Bill. Okay, good. Yeah, good. done. Yeah. But, um, no, what's up is I, I've loved what you've been doing since the beginning. I remember the first time I reached out to you and I was just like, oh, I'm just going to let them know I love like the example of good content marketing where it's all about the audience. It's all about like who you're trying to inspire. It's not about, you know, yourself yeah. and what you can do or withholding secrets. Te- teach people yeah. how to machine and make money and take care of their families. And, and you were like, dude, you get it. And you yeah. replied to me, you were like, hey, you're one of the few who gets it in this yeah. industry. Because I, th- I feel like they get it more now than they did. 100%. You know, the industry does. Yep. But early on, there was only a few people who were like, hey, let's just share all our secrets. Yep. You know, let's just share everything we can and, and try to make everybody better. And guess what happens when you do that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, your brand grows, too. Yeah, yeah it and does. And, and then let's surround uh, ourselves with the best in the industry yeah buddy. and share their secrets too yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah exactly like, right. but it's true i think barry right we talked about that in some early podcasts the guys did not want to give information away in the oh, early yeah. days they Absolutely just held not. on to it it was like job security mm-hmm. yep yeah. yep and now here we are telling every little secret we have as we should yep yeah super good yeah super good we see I mean, it every day you, you got to bring awareness to this industry you got to show people what's possible and if you're going to be a great country, you have to have a solid foundation that's in manufacturing. And, hey, if you're not teaching it to your kids in school, that's a problem. You yeah. know? So now that's that's the biggest thing is to pull schools forward, give them good curriculum, give them good knowledge, get these kids excited, you know, show them like, you know, give them tutorials for the learning process and then actually just get them excited with YouTube videos and show them greatness so that mm-hmm. they can be like, hey, I want to do that. I want to run those types of machines. I want to get on the Hellers, man, on the DN, on all that, and and show them like there are levels to the game. Yeah, you know we were talking I mean? about, that. about that. Yeah, levels, that was the word man. of the night: levels. Levels. <laughs> yeah. levels and there are baby. levels. Yeah. Levels. I love yeah. those levels. Well, speaking of education, let's shout out Gabe. You know, our uh, buddy Gabe. Gabe's, Gabe's a rock star. Yeah. I got to know him last week. You know, I, we were just kind of chatting on LinkedIn here and there, and last week. We got to like actually talk on the phone for a while. I love that dude. He yeah. is yeah. a amazing guy and just passionate, like we all are, right? That's I think the one connection that you can get from the people that we are around is the passion that you have for this industry, the mm-hmm. love for this industry, because it is like you always say, it's the greatest industry in the world. It like radiates off of the guy, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And he's one of those just big, big flag wavers. He loves yeah. it. And then he he said he had like fifteen different high schools that for. I think it was a day or a half day of their it's of their week. It's they, literally they happening in. right now. Yeah. yeah. So it's happening right now. So I was texting with him uh, at, uh, last night on the way to dinner. And then yep. he was like, hey, I got 15 schools and I'm teaching them like the Titans of CNC, how to like use it and stuff. And I was like, dude, that's awesome. And I was like, hey, you want to FaceTime? Like I'll, I'll jump <laughs> oh, on and like, sweet. so right after this, you you can come with us. And we'll just go in there. We're just going to talk to all the teachers and like just answer some questions and all that. And so great Super that's good. awesome yeah we, we were brainstorming some like really cool ideas for okay yeah learn how to run the machines learn how to make parts and then like maybe bring it up to the whole business of it right like Loved how do you it. quote like yes. how do you make sure you hit your target times how do you get into industries where you can charge more 
And I know you guys are teaching some of that too, but that's a lot of what we focus on with making chips is like running a business of machining yeah. or manufacturing. Which so is so he was important. Feeling that too. It's so important, right? I would say this all the time. We've talked about this, you know, going through the process of starting that business. The machinists, you know the guys that are going to leave the shop and start their own. They're yeah. just too talented and they want to do their own thing. Once they get into that position, it is overwhelming to a point of, oh, my God, quoting and, and using certain, uh, you know, uh, techniques to get those quotes done in, in a fashion that, that gets them a job. Yeah, you got to do sales, you got to do, do marketing, thing. you yeah. got to do HR, you got to do all this stuff that you maybe weren't thinking about early on. And uh, I think it's important to teach. I like, love that. Like, let's make entrepreneurs. Yeah. You know? A lot of the episodes we've been doing on Making Chips are all about, like, making entrepreneurs. You yeah, know? that's so great. Everything that you just said, and when you were going down on your fingers right there, that whole list, you know, you know who makes the best, who, who's the best to do all that? Great machinists. Yeah. yeah. For machinists yep. that program, people would criticize me and say, like, not everyone can be a programmer. But I said, even if they don't program, if you teach them how to program, they'll understand the process better. They'll understand inspection better. They'll be understand reading blueprints Great call. better. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yep. And, and all of it. And it's very hard for somebody to actually quote accurately if they don't know how to machine aggressively and they don't understand the levels mm -hmm. and what they're they'll do and that's why when like for me like spacex blue origin like thousands and thousands of parts i quoted every single job I've, has ever come through my shop oh, that's wow. it Amazing. because like i could look i can look at it as a machinist and just think about the vast experience of everything that we've ever done every tool speed feed depth how you would hold it there and there's nobody else in the shop more qualified than me mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. so it's like you and then you're like okay i can i can change this adjust this and they're like this is the price right here and stuff so i think that you know when people say oh you shouldn't teach them programming because they might get discouraged if they don't because they're not going to be a programmer no it's like I'm teaching them to be great, you know what yeah. I mean? And, to make and, quality and, parts. That's yeah. like, and maybe right. they're not, not just do for one you. little. We we talked about that on the uh, it was like two episodes ago, but the guest Stephen Corshain, gr great guy, he was like, you know, I think we created the skills gap when we tried to silo like, okay, you're a machinist, you're a programmer, 100%. you're an engineer, yep. and then the other thing that we did is we like killed automation. Like, yep. it's so hard to automate if you don't know what's next and what goes into what's next. Good and, call. And you're like, oh, got to do this handoff over there and handoff over here, and you can't really understand the whole process. Yep. It makes automation that much harder, too. And I was like, man, there's there's a lot to that. Yeah. Because, like, what a machinist was when people did a little bit of everything and then what a machinist is in some places where they're not really a machinist. Right. You know, they're doing, like, one little element of the process. Good call. You know, I think that's a huge problem. Mm -hmm. So the more you can can make people well-rounded and maybe they have like a specialization like they're awesome at this part of the process and that's what they focus on but like i love that you you teach work holding yeah. you, you teach um programming you teach the, the cad modeling of course you teach the machining and how to push the machine to its limits but like when people graduate from your academy they they know like okay i know how uh, the entire process on yep. how to make a part that's yeah. a good call that's a good and, and then and then it's then it's there's just levels yeah it comes back to levels because it's like okay i understand the process of making a part and then it's like okay now what materials mm -hmm. are we doing it? how many are yeah. we in production are we doing prototypes you know are we doing big are we doing small how intricate and then it just it once you understand the process it's just a matter of like having Swiss cheese with more holes, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. and, and just understanding that it's all the same. Mm -hmm. It's just going to take more time. You Swiss, know what I mean? It's so funny. You know, we make the tombstones, right? Yeah. And people are like, what are those? I'm like, it's a big <laughs> rectangular block that looks like Swiss cheese with a ton of holes. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> you put raw Super material good. on there and go to town. Yeah, those holes are in the exact perfect spot, though. That's right. <laughs> They're not easy to make. That's but, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, shout, shout out to you also, Nick, for that time that I called you. And I was like, dude, we're getting like a monster machine. And like, I need like a, a tombstone like right now. And you're like, nobody has those tombstones in America. And you're, like, <laughs> you're like, wait, we have one. Yeah. I'll send it to you. And Honestly, I, like, I think that was a little bit of a God thing because like it was a, a thousand millimeter, 800 millimeter tombstone. Like nobody keeps those on the shelf. Of course. You know? They're not, not that many machines that big get sold every day. So we just we ended up having a customer that we shipped one to and i don't know if they lost the contract or what happened but they like never put it on a machine 
yeah. and they called us back and they were like, "Will you buy it back?" And we we're like, "We don't really do that." But. And then Titan calls and I'm like, "Hey, guess what? We do that." <laughs> <laughs> so, so we good. bought it back, sent it to you, and then you sold the machine, yeah. and then we sold the tombstone. It was awesome. I that love how you good. said it's a, do- a God thing because even on the side of it, you guys had built on the rock. Yeah. Let's talk a little about about your company yeah. right there. So okay, we're. Advanced Machine and Engineering has the Amrock Work Holding Group. Yeah, you know, mo- mostly known for tombstones and big grid plates, a lot of like big aerospace foundations, right? Heck awesome. yeah. And you know, honestly, we don't want to just sell tombstones and grid plates. We want to put our partners' products on there and really solve the whole problem. Exactly. You know, like how what are you going to do with that? Nobody just buys a tombstone and keeps it there. They always put some clamping on of it. Of course. So it's like, okay, the Amrock tombstone. Let's build on the rock. You know, it comes from that Bible verse, the wise man builds on the rock, right? That's so, it. So you can buy components from all over the place or you can deal with us and, like, find a full integrated solution that we, you know, co-created with our customer and, boom, you know, build on the rock. Heck Do yes. the wise thing. What a great Get call. Get yourself an, an American-made tombstone. And if you're looking for those tombstones, you can go to titansofcnc.com. Yeah, that's right. And oh, what, what's man. cool about— Oh, come on. I love what you guys did because, like, okay, they all match to the standard sizes, right? So— you know, 500, 630, 800, 800. whatever, right? Yep. And then you guys made it easy, like, hey, this fits this DN, this fits this Heller, this fits whatever. So you can kind of sort by that. And then yeah. we got all sorts of patterns, shapes, and sizes. And you want, you want 50 millimeter spread? We could do that. If you want a two inch spread, we could do that, you know? Four sided, two sided, hex. <laughs> yeah. Right? Crosses, cross, cross triangles. Yeah. And Any like, shape, really. And that, and that, <laughs> what do you want? What does that, the part look like? That's literally the beauty of machining, is like, you just have to look at your work envelope, think about your part, and each there's so many that are intricate with crazy holes, and then you literally can just design a tombstone however you mm-hmm, want mm-hmm. to to get the most parts on to hit the right angles, you know, mm-hmm. depending on where the holes are coming from. And you design it yourself. And then that that ability to be creative and, and have that intellect to understand it, that is what separates you. You can have, people can have a crazy college education. They can have like money. They can have these different backgrounds and stuff. But it doesn't matter. Somebody who has the ability to outthink other people Good in the call. creative sense can actually make more money and thrive in this industry. And that's why somebody like myself, who was homeless and went through prison and went had a crazy hard life, I thrive because I'm an artist and mm-hmm. I and I'm. I'm a little, you know, because of that art, I'll just sit there for 10 hours and just do one thing and, like, not talk. And a lot of machinists are introverts That's like one that. thing that— That's how Barry likes being by himself back then. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing that I uh, didn't realize we had in common until we got to know each other, but I was going to be, like, a painter. Yeah, that's that awesome. Was like, I was, like, a fine artist painter, and that's, like— well, Very I, cool. I was like, I don't think I'm going to go into the family business, you know? Because, like, I'm not into math. I'm not into engineering. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm, like, more into— <laughs> making art you very know? cool and my dad was like he'll probably come like run sales and marketing someday because he can't shut up yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's what you need you need the but, ability but what what's cool about work holding is i think okay i want to hold this part right you bring it to five fixture designers you'll get five different concepts and yep, they, they'll yep. all they'll all work in their own way right so it's like maybe <laughs> maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe if you're good yeah but there's a lot of different ways to hold a part right and of depending on what you're trying to accomplish it's not like you get the same thing and so it's it is a really creative aspect of machining is is, is the work holding so no doubt about and it. everybody has their own flair uh-huh. so yeah i used to want to be a comic book artist really so, yeah no way I, I think all of us. Yeah. Um, when I look at your parts, you literally are. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Bam. Wham. Crash. <laughs> look at how red Barry is. Barry is red right now. Crash. Oh. You see the like the, 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 the word Batman. bubbles. This guy. Scream. This guy came right. to work for me, and then. He was trying to figure me out, and then then I just started talking smack to him, and he's like, "Oh, he is a real machinist." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that's awesome. That is good. So the AME side, you got all the work holding, the everything that covers that, and then the Hennig side. Yeah, yeah. So Hennig's our sister company, uh, about the same size. Yeah. You know, Hennig's probably more global, more brand recognition because we do tons of chip conveyors. Knew it well. Yeah. So you yeah. know, like. Lots of the Haas chip conveyors are, in, in are Chicago. Ours. Yeah, yeah. Rockford's like an hour west of Chicago where yeah. we're at. Yeah, American yeah. made. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. I mean, we make our belts. I mean, we super good. There's like a couple components we get from overseas, but yeah. really the whole thing's made by us. And awesome. and we're competitive, man. Like if we can if we can do it for the highest volume machine tool builder in North America, we can do it. You know. Heck yes. So. Yeah. And what, it's what a I, great. What prop. I love. What I 
I love, if I can just say real quick, yeah. since we're on that subject, yeah. is like now you're going to be making some products for the styles, man, yeah. right here in the yeah. U.S. I'm super yeah, pumped about that. Bud, yeah, exactly. super good. You want to go into that oh, maybe a little bit? It's been, well, one, thank you very much, because we did, we, we needed a domestic option for a chip conveyor. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, Nick is, is great, has been, you know, reached out to us so many different times, had great conversations. The style product has been insane. We yeah. have been, I think we're up to 48 machines sold since January. January across all industry yeah. you know you last year yeah 2023 we weren't a distributor we were not and like all the elites were like laughing like you're gonna be a distributor like and it's what like, does that mean what you can't do that I'm like we've been teaching all the machinists for years we have relationships and and we're why funding not now free education. And, and those, why to the point you? earlier, those people become entrepreneurs. They exactly. they get into decision Dude, making all... mode where they're buying equipment. It's and who are they going to so, trust? It makes me so <laughs> happy. I get on the phone. All, I'm on the phone all day, every day now. And the the younger gen that's coming into this industry because of this guy and and what he's put out there. And I get guys. And I've watched team. every video. Oh, the team exactly. Yeah. They love him. We had a guy near yesterday from Idaho. He and his wife. And they were just, you know, I don't want to say starstruck, but they have seen every video. And they, well, I walked them through the whole shop. Then, of course, we went back to the Sile to the X7, and Jesse did a little demo for him, got to say hello to Barry and take pictures. They just thrive coming through here, and, and then they're just, this is so you know great for them to see under this roof what we what we do every day Super good. yeah because you see it on the camera and then when you walk in you're like wow that's yeah pretty cool. it's <laughs> great it's what, great. A, what a showroom for for my man cave someday, right <laughs> yeah you got that right so, yeah. so anyway yeah thank you and yeah. and to anybody buying a style i mean we're gonna have products that are made in the u.s that can actually attach and make it 100 yeah because yeah. yeah. a lot of, i asked i called you like i don't know every few weeks you know hey yep. where are we at with things yep, yep, and yep. do you need conveyors and and it was a constraint for you you know it trying was, to get them yeah. from overseas so it's like, of course. all right, well, how many have conveyors? And yeah. Not all of them do yet, but like it's an option that's available now. And I think it'll be, I don't know, man, I don't, I don't like shoveling chips. No, <laughs> you know? nobody does, yeah. right? I'd rather be like making chips and making parts and, you know, have that taken care of for it's me. It's true. So. And, and that's where the, you know, again, you, know, you get to a point where you get a lot, lar large production job, right? And yeah. then the amount of chips that creates, you don't want to be digging that stuff out. Get mm -hmm. a conveyor, yeah. get something. And you guys took all the spec uh, numbers yesterday and have, I think, even an option for, we might even look at an X5 option. Yeah. 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 I mean, why not? Why not? So throw right. it out there. That's, that's, that's huge, too because a lot of like we we're talking about automation yesterday mm -hmm. and i was like one thing that i like to do to base on the levels is that when people go from you know making like small runs and like five parts and 20 parts and, and all that and they start like bumping up into the hundreds and maybe a thousand they're not ready for a robot they're not ready for automation although automation could work for them in that state but it's like Fixturing is everything. Like, let's let's actually go to the level of like creating fixture plates and run a hundred parts, twenty parts at a time. Close the door, walk away from the machine, bring in chip bands, do different yeah. things and stuff. And in those those cases, you can do that even on the style. Mm -hmm. You have chip problems because the chips are going to be dropping, and then then your machine. That's when you can start damaging your machine. Is when this thing's like pressing against. Yeah, people don't metal. think like chip management exactly. has a lot to do with automation, and it yeah. does. Right? Yeah. it's like all the Hugely. things that a person would have to deal with. Okay, like if you're trying to run lights out. There's no person. You got so it. So you got to consider all of that. Yep. And, you know, chip management's a huge part of it. That's where your CDF uh, conveyor is amazing, yeah, right? Yeah, with the filtration yeah. down to like 50 or even less. You know, exactly. Micron, so, yeah. Exactly. Because you're exactly right. I had customers that would literally, lights out manufacturing, wake up, get to the shop in the morning and have a puddle, a lake mm -hmm. of, of coolant because mm -hmm. the chip conveyor failed. They mm -hmm. didn't understand that chip management accommodated for everything that they had to do. And I think that's a good, they didn't understand like 90 plus percent of the issues with chip conveyors yeah it's just like the misapplication correct you should have used a scraper belt instead of a hinge belt or you should have put filtration on it or whatever right totally agree with so you. what happens and you were one of these guys hopefully you didn't do what i'm about to say but the machine tool sales guy just he's not selling a machine like conveyor first nobody does right, right. so they just like okay uh, yeah they need a machine they want a conveyor check a box they didn't ask about Move what they're on. even machining they, right you know they check the wrong box the next thing you know it's like oh my conveyor sucks yeah like no your conveyor is fine it's just the wrong conveyor good call you know, of course it doesn't work good you put call. It, you, you're machining this and you put a conveyor on for that right so 
Um, and speaking of education that, is so important, you know. Yeah, and speaking of that, you're totally right. As a salesman, 30 years of selling machine tools and well over 3,000 machines, you didn't think about the conveyor. It was just, oh, it's a standard part of the machine. Yep, yeah, this is what we go. And then when you start to see those lights out applications, you go, oh, crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I got to be thinking about it. I got to be thinking about it. Exactly. Yeah. Great call. Yeah. yeah, great call. And it's high pressure, too. I mean, we're, we're coolant management. Yeah. Right? So we're. We're getting into high pressure um, for even some of the machines that you guys are. The high pressure selling. units are amazing. Yeah, super God, those quiet. Things are cute. They're yeah, so nice. they are. They're adorable. They are very Aww. nice. And, and, they don't, and they don't give you a headache. <laughs> they right? don't. They and they're quiet. You can't yeah. even hear those things run. Yeah, we say like all all of the pressure, none of the stress. Yeah, you know, we just we just deal with it for you guys. So. Get all your taglines. You I'm do good that's with my that. thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the slogan man. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> so oh, I love it. So you've never been on a you know podcast before, huh? No, I I don't know. Like every. Do we sing? Are, you know, yeah. Do we, are you? Do we dance? <laughs> there's cameras now. You know, most of the time I do it. There's no cameras. So. Usually we just have the guests do that. Okay, so. cool. That's All right. right. Well, yeah, whenever you're ready. Proud <laughs> to be an American at yeah. Titan CNC. Oh, nice. Whoa. Nice. Whoa. Look Whoa. at this. He's like, he's like future. Titan levels. <laughs> <laughs> this is levels of podcasting. Okay. You didn't know you were getting like oh, an actual recording. Oh, spring so good. Yeah. <laughs> spring but I, I love like uh, over the years I've been on um, Mango Chips multiple times yeah like four or five times yeah yeah yeah. and you come down to uh texas and i I remember we did didn't we do one at imts and um i forget we did did, i don't know i know we did a few over there yeah 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 yeah. and then um yeah super good man i just want to like give a shout out to jason if i could yeah please yeah dude I've been, uh, my wife and I have just been praying for him and then i don't know the whole world the industry has been praying for him and then uh yeah man just miracles from God, man. It's yeah. so good to yeah. see. I mean, when I flew there, when I got the news about his heart attack, like yeah. I flew there with. He said he's such a young guy. Lots of prayer, but not a lot of high hopes at that yeah. time, man. Right. Like we, like it was n- not a good situation yeah. at mm-hmm. all. You know, they call it the widowmaker. Yep. For a reason. Yep. Yeah. And um, yeah, and here he is now. He's just kicking butt. It's yeah. so cool. It's, it's yeah crazy miracles like yeah. the way everything happened and stuff i'm sure you guys we did you know, a whole we, episode we go... on like the seven different miraculous things that happened so you, can, you guys can check that out if you want to hear the story but thank you for shouting him out because that's my brother yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah i mean yeah. yeah he's he's a brother to all of us and uh i mean he brings he's a he's always had such a positive attitude you know and i love his faith you know and mm-hmm. that and he's just like cares about this trade you know yeah. what i mean yeah for sure <clears throat> and he's a he's a company owner and yeah. his wife, you know, yeah, and yeah. and they get after it. They're the real deal. Yeah, and, yeah, absolutely. Man, and God, you know what God else he's so awesome good, at? Man. Like second to maybe only you. Um, <laughs> yeah. talk, talking crap. Talking <laughs> talk crap. Oh, man. <laughs> talking oh, man. crap about me. <laughs> it's so fun on the, on the podcast. Oh, it's good uh, stuff. <laughs> you got to have fun, oh, right? Yeah, this industry will knock you down sometimes. It's like, oh, so, oh, someone jabbed me? Like. And, and you're going to take it personal? Like, go go somewhere else. That's exactly <laughs> yeah, go, right. Go work in somewhere else. You got that right. Where you have s- safe spaces or whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> China. We did some a play, video. Some Play-Doh and stuffed animals. And <laughs> <Yeah>. Crayons. <laughs> right. Get right. some crayons. Don't wrap yourself in bubble wrap and hide <laughs> yourself in safe space. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm like, don't get me in trouble. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy, <laughs> easy. So, so good, man. But, man, hey, just... Just praise God for Jason and just, Lord, I just pray, Father God, that you would just touch his family and touch his heart and touch him and that you just cover him, Father God, and your angels would surround that family. And I just pray, Father God, that you just move mightily in his life and that he'd be stronger than ever and you'd use all that he went through just to be qualified to touch so many people. I thank you so much, Lord, for what you've done in Jason's life. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 Man. Yeah, yeah, oh man, you. great yeah. stuff. Yeah, and it's yeah. and it's just like more and more. He's back recording with us now. Very it's cool. cool. Yeah, and it's like we're having it, we're having fun doing it. It, so. it tripped me out when I when I found out, like, I knew I knew I knew bits and pieces, and I knew it was a widow maker and <clears throat> different things. But like when when I realized that he actually had a heart transplant, like, yeah. and the miracles that came with that. That yeah. was like, like, like making whoa. the list, like, whoa, you know, working you know, to, the to list. make, to Jeez. like be, uh, approved for one, yeah. you know, cause that you gotta, you gotta hit certain levels. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then and he, he wasn't approved. He wasn't the first yeah. time. Right. And then, um, it was like, I don't know, a day or two later, he like qualified for one mm. and then less than 24 hours later he was in surgery. Getting Incredible. It done. And then here's the other thing, <laughs> not to like recap the whole story, but you know, they, 
they usually take like eight hours, right, to like get, put the new heart in. Then they got to like wake it up. And I, I don't know how it all works, but like two and a half hours after the surgery, his new heart was beating. Jeez. Yeah. Like two, after the surgery started. Like, so they were in and out. Yeah. Like, and Com- in comparison. it just went really, really, really oh. well. And he's still going through a lot, you know, like he had some amputations and stuff and he's been through a lot and, and it's still an uphill battle. But like his faith, his attitude. Yeah. He's pumped. If you talk to him, he's, yeah. he's in a good mood. Yeah, you fantastic. Know? And it's we awesome. Yeah. Heck yeah. Well, God bless him. And he's not he's not completely out of the woods. So like we just keep praying for him. Yeah, like, yeah. Super good. If you guys don't know, uh, Jason, like he is, <laughs> he's like a, almost like an icon of this like industry yeah. because I mean, you just see him everywhere, and he's been talking on. You guys have done how many podcasts? We're like. Four hundred and fifteen wow. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, you know, so yeah. he he's Good been out stuff. there. You guys have been just talking. And it was to his idea, and, like, hey, let's yeah. make a let's make a podcast yeah. for leaders of manufacturing companies. Yeah, very you know, cool. And he was like, if if fifty people listen and it helps them, that'd be great. Super. And then man. you know, now it's like. Man, a lot of people listen. Yeah, I'm more than 50. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> good so, stuff. So yeah, it's cool. But I love that every time I see him, he just has a smile on his face, man. Yeah. And when you when you called me that time, that was it was like surreal because I was like, wait. That's like the healthiest guy I've ever seen. I know. You know, that's the that's the wild. That's crazy. Part. Like he was He's so way he, way healthier than me, man. Well, what <laughs> we told him is like, younger. don't get discouraged. You know, like your your health is important, right? And he he knows that, and I, and I think that he was so healthy not because like it was going to prevent it, but so he could survive it. Because yeah. if he was like weakened yeah. at all, or if he wasn't in great shape, like, no, nah, man. Yeah. So mm. crazy. Yeah, it was cool. Crazy. Yeah. Super good, man. Yeah. So. You literally were born into the trade. Like, maybe tell us a little bit about, like, <laughs> yeah, uh, I know, like, the fam. you know, yeah, we're, so we're talking I mean, with some of the guys that you were uh, with yesterday, and they were, like, literally working at the shop when you were, like, born. Yeah. No, yeah. I know. They said in <laughs> slippers <laughs> and pajamas walking through the shop. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> I always joke, like, we do what Germans do. You know, we immigrate to the States and then start an engineering and a manufacturing company. There and you go. My grandfather's 93 and still can't stop, like, on the drafting board. He Amazing. actually. Uh, he was working for Ingersoll Milling Machine, and then the the start of our company was he and a group of people like invented the first s- circular carbide production saw. Hello, like, circular saw blade, carbide teeth, like cu- just blasting through rail for like railroad manufacturing or you know s- billet at a steel mill or whatever. Heck so, yeah, you know, it's not for like a couple cuts a day. It's for twenty four seven just powering through. There's not that many steel mills in the U S. anymore. No, we still sell maybe you know three four big monster machines a year and that's, so you still have that product yeah line. like we're yeah i guess a machine tool builder but Heck not yeah. not like any of the stuff you see here just these big monster saws you know wow and um my my father took over <laughs> one day my grandfather was making a speech uh at a company party and he just said yeah okay so deep the president now my dad's name is deep he's like yeah deep the uh president now and my dad's like oh what <laughs> I am, <laughs> I am. <laughs> and, and my dad, yeah, he worked hard, man. This industry's not easy. He worked super hard. My dad was always on the phone, always like just like this, looking at drawings, like quoting. He quoted everything, and it was hard. And I, I grew up just like you know all that hard work. I was able to focus on what what I cared about: school, soccer. Heck yeah, you know. And I, I was like, man. That, my dad's job seems hard. I don't know if I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah. I said yeah. the exact same I want to be a starving yeah. that's you, artist. That's how you were? Oh, yeah. My family's very similar. Four generations ago, came from Germany, started machine shops. Oh, yeah. Really? Yep. Let's see. Yep. There you go. I grew up watching my Seltzer. dad with that, that whole stressed <laughs> out look on his face every day. And I was like, man, I don't want that for myself. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, like I said, I wanted to be an artist, right? And uh, my dad never, my mom was like, don't do what your dad did. Don't force the kids into the business. Don't tell Nick he's the president. Someday. <laughs> <laughs> I got an older brother. For yeah, that. right. There <laughs> you know, you go. Noah's awesome, but like, Noah's great. Uh, he he wanted it to be like my choice, you know. And I fell in love with this girl, and I was working at a restaurant, making money, bartending, and not enough money to like really make things make happen. a life for us. Sure. You know, my dad's like, hey, uh, what do you want to do? You know. And I was like, I think I want to work for the company, and um, I think I want to be in um, marketing. And one of the best things he ever said to me was like, all right, well, you can't be in marketing until you're in field sales and service. Good like call. actually going out and solving problems for people in their yep. shop. You know, people are frustrated when their chip conveyor doesn't work or when their way covers are smashed or whatever it is. Yep. And he's like, I'm not going to have you writing our website talking to it like thousands of people if you don't know how to help that guy. That's you right. Know, Gary, the maintenance guy. 
if you can't help him. And it was like the best advice ever because I started to learn like what people care about. Yeah. You know? Like you guys know what a machinist cares about, and that's why you put the content out that you do. Yep. And so I actually was in sales for a while before like they moved it into the marketing side and then you know, I'm into content. I'm into sharing value, and so heck that's yeah. Like, but you think about how many marketing people you run into that have no idea what they're Crazy. marketing. Exactly, and it's, he he just didn't want me to be another guy that like kind of gets made yep. fun of, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is easy. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of them out there. Like Barry's not wrong. You know, there's just a lot of people being like, oh yeah, the lav. You know. Yeah, right. Exactly. You should buy a lav. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to lead machinists because. Everything is so intricate and there's mm -hmm. such a talent and knowledge and like it takes such a long time to like hone that art right there. And if you don't understand it, machinists like they won't listen to you. Mm -hmm. They you know won't. I mean? Right. They and, won't. And if, if you're trying to just sell end mills because some company is like, hey, I'm going to pay you, you know, six figures to actually just get a bunch of these sold. Like they see right through it. Mm -hmm. like they they want to hear that cut. They want to like see the tool and and understand like what are the options and like why should I buy this tool? And if you're like, oh, it's it's gold, the gold one. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, like, it's the it's best. It's made out of gold. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're, they're gonna be like, uh, yeah, no, thank you. Uh, you know? Yeah, and that's how a lot of people do that. Yeah, because like you said, if you say. I don't want this to discourage people and give them like imposter syndrome, but if you say lath or whatever, like you're yeah, written off. It's done. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? So, you but I know how to pronounce lath. <laughs> yeah, correct. Exactly. There's, certain, there's certain things like you just got to know. And then if you don't know, you know, this industry is pretty cool at answering your questions. You know, no that's doubt the about thing. It. I ask so many questions yeah. to this day. Have to. And, you know, now like I lead the whole sales team and I'm, know a lot more than I used to, but it's because I just asked a lot of questions. I wasn't, like, afraid to ask people, hey, what does no. that mean? What does that do? I was asking, I don't know tons about EDM. I was yeah. asking, what's his name? Trevor. 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 I was asking, Tre Trevor's, like, explaining all Dude, that. Dude, he's a he rock goes, star. And I'm like, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You just watch our channel, and you watch the different videos, and, and the, your vocabulary builds. Yes, exactly. And what are the greatest things? And uh, something that Kenna Metal does is, like, they'll have their sales guys and their uh, sales engineers actually do our academy and make parts. Good call. And that is that is phenomenal because mm -hmm. they're actually making something. Even if they're not going to be a machinist, they understand the process of making something. And then when they talk to somebody, they just get it. Yeah. Get so it like, it's funny you said that. Our automation group, you know, my cousin's like a mechatronics automation dude. He went to high school in Austria. So like to, full circle back to Gabe, you know, these kids are spending part of their day in a machine shop. Yeah. In Austria, like they do some things right with education. You of start course. to specialize like early on. Mm -hmm. you know? Europe so, is awesome for that. They so do like a great you're kind of like we got to take like forever gen ed classes for six years or whatever, and yeah. then you can start to learn what you want. Right. You know, you're already doing that at like what was called like a hotel in Austria. So he had this mechatronics background. He had a little bit of shop experience, and then he went into automation. But it was more like. Um, packaging but like moving stuff around automation it wasn't machining automation sure so mm -hmm. when he when he came back to the family business to like help grow our machining automation group it was like uh yeah i'm gonna start taking titan's classes and just refresh myself on all this stuff good stuff but, like it was Super his good. idea you yeah know? yeah because he's like i just want to you know get i was running like machines in austria a long time ago but things have changed right yeah i think so. it was one of the best things bill selway did for me when i got in the industry i didn't know anything about machine tools and i spent 90 days in service tearing them apart thrust yeah. bearings draw tube or draw bar assemblies and and, and everything you had that to learn, weight lube jets and weight lube and spindle oils. And mm -hmm. if, without that, without that knowledge tapers, you know, you just didn't have that to go into a shop and start talking, you know, educational about uh, what the guy needed. Yeah. You didn't even know what the machine was. Yeah. It was it's, the best thing I ever you brought, did. You brought up draw bar assemblies. Like, I don't know, do people check the pull force on their spindle? They do not. Because <laughs> yeah. it's really expensive to replace a spindle. You got it. Way less well, expensive to replace a draw bar. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, hello. I mean, I mean, not not even trying to do that, but yeah. yeah, like nobody does that. You know what I mean? Nobody yeah. checks the pull force. It's Never. Like, what the heck? Yep. It so. reminds me of when I was at General Atomics. I actually ripped the Cat Forty holders out of my spindle like three times, and it was because of the draw bar. <laughs> yeah, like you had springs broken or yep. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. that crazy. You can figure that out way before you're ripping the whole spindle out of the machine. <laughs> yeah, there you the go. The downtime's expensive. The spindle's expensive. Yep. It's like let's let's do some of that stuff. Isn't that crazy so. spindles. But I love that. Like same thing. You had to go into service first. Hundred yeah. percent. Good yep. call, Bill. Right. Yep. So, good call, Bill. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. 
the Super educational good. part of it. What do they say? Like uh, the sales guy sells the first one, the service guy sells the rest. The rest, yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> and it is true. Yeah, you got to have. Or a good the machinist, if you're Barry at IMTS at the DN Ooh. Solutions Group. <laughs> oh man, oh, come on! Yeah. Barry is like the best best salesperson. Exactly. Yeah. Oh man, way to go, Barry! Just like know the audience, right? You are, you are the machinist because he's making the parts. People yeah. people trust the machinist making the parts, no and doubt. that's why like social media has changed the game because now you can go into like our Titans of CNC facebook group you know and just mm -hmm. be with 80 something thousand machinists ask any question and just and just learn anything yeah answers Literally. immediately yeah. that's immediately. a huge part of like why we're so pumped to be partnered with you guys because like we get yeah okay we get a ton of views and all that that's awesome like i'm not discounting that but we get like to learn about the audience more and more like what what do people say what Heck do yeah. people want yep you know we talked yesterday like a huge part of this for us is just like trying to make sure we're delivering the best thing yeah. to the machinists to the people running and buying the machines and maintaining the machines and you guys are going to be like just a, a, a direct channel into the biggest group of the people actually doing it and that's that what we love you know i will say this in the in the almost year that i've been here it is the people in the industry the machinists that we get to talk to every day that we just love the engagement it's mm -hmm. hard yeah. not to they're yeah. such great people they have such great you know every day they're building something to make this country great it's what we do and and you're right barry and all the guys have have the pulse of those guys and yeah. and they get to comment and talk to them every day it's easy to think about like your stuff and think like inside out yeah you know and then 100%. Like, oh, we should do it this way we should do it that way like did anyone tell you that yeah or did you just think it was what you should do right, right. good call so we really we're super into the voice of the customer so you great know, it's a huge part as you of have to us. be yeah you have to be yeah Awesome, man. Well, yeah. thank you for coming. Yeah, of course. Heck man. yeah. Super good. And we worked. We didn't play we any did. golf. No, we <laughs> did it. Actually, damn it. Uh, damn it. Next think, time. Yeah, yeah. We'll Super even good, get man. this guy out. Well, he probably, <laughs> it would probably, you know, I don't know, but he might have like a 500-yard drive. Yeah, I know. He's going to say or break the club. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll go like the wrong way. But, yeah, it'll know, be like, like on the wrong green, but yeah. he'll drive the green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll launch it. Absolutely. I'm better at top golf. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. We there just you smash go. it over the net. I know. I know. All <laughs> cool, good, man. But yeah, yeah, thank you, man. And I appreciate uh, you appreciate guys. appreciate the partnership. And uh yeah, make incredible parts for these machines to help machinists and and do all and through the partnership we fund pre education. That's man. right. Yeah. No doubt. Then take it to the highest level. And, and uh, yeah, thanks for the like everything you've done for Jason. We'll have to reveal something. There's a little yeah, yeah, some, yeah. something special you've done for him. Yeah, but it's, it's so great. That's nothing that's nothing, man. Like I'm just super like praise god that he's like alive and doing well and he's already yeah. like talking smack to you so yeah. <laughs> that's, right, that's right he's back <laughs> he's back all cylinders go yeah i should like lower my chair you know can i do this there <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm always the short guy i make it chips you know chase look like that <laughs> i know these ones have that, oh, that thing it. so i drop down and he goes up so i go up so we're like, we're, I, he's like yeah how'd you do that yeah, I, I know. Know. I'm not, I'm not. So I gotta good. get eye to eye with this guy well cool all awesome, right guys, man. Cool. Yeah. All awesome. right. Thanks Shout for being out, here, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Hey, boom. Or boom, bam, which, whichever one. No, it's boom. You guys, you guys <laughs> couldn't, boom. You guys couldn't copy boom, so you guys went with bam. Bro. I, it's, all, it's a little, it's like the feminine of boom. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. I mean, it makes me think of the Flintstones, right? Like, bam, bam. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and Barney You're like is short Barry, as well. Like you guys just pitch me like softball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you like, just smash him over the net at top golf. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. We're out. Love, it. Boom. Love you guys. <laughs>